When you first see the lumbosacral plexus, it might look complicated. If someone were to ask you to draw it, you'd probably tell them to take a flying leap. But in reality, it's not all that complicated, and you can certainly learn how to draw the lumbosacral plexus. In this video, I'm going to attempt to demystify this lumbosacral plexus and show you an easy way to draw it, so you too can impress your friends and colleagues at your next social gathering. If your professor requires that you know the nerve root levels for each nerve, you'll want to stay tuned because in a later section, you'll see that you can often use this drawing to trace each nerve back to its origin to figure out the nerve root levels for that particular nerve. Also, don't forget to stay tuned until the end where I'll run through a little bonus mnemonic that you might find helpful. Are you ready to get started? Alright, let's do this! Alright, first, let's list the nerve root levels that contribute to the lumbosacral plexus. They include all the nerve root levels from L1 all the way down to S4. Next, we're going to draw three long lines, one at L1, one at L2, and then one at S2. And then a line about half the size at L3. Next, I'll draw in a contribution from T12 and label it thusly. At the end of the top two long lines, I'll draw two branches off of L1, one that goes upwards and then one that joins L2 to make three separate nerves. This first nerve, the iliohypogastric nerve, this nerve pierces the transversus abdominis and runs between it and the internal oblique. The ilioinguinal nerve, which pierces both muscles to enter the middle of the inguinal canal, and then the genitofemoral nerve, which enters the inguinal canal through the deep inguinal ring. Sometimes the iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerves run together and appear as if they're one nerve in the cadaver dissection, so watch out for that when you're doing your dissection. Next, I'll draw a little connector to indicate the contribution of fibers from L2 down to L3. And behind this, indicated by the dotted line, will be the lateral femorocutaneous nerve. Off the end of L3, we'll draw branches that resemble a can opener. The top part will be the obturator nerve, which will run through the obturator frame and to supply the adductors of the thigh. The bottom part will be the femoral nerve, which will supply the muscles of the anterior thigh. One of the branches off the femoral nerve will be a long, thin nerve that runs with the great saphenous vein, the saphenous nerve. Next, we'll draw the L4 nerve root and show that its fibers contribute to the nerves above and below. We'll also connect L5 and S1 to show those fibers contribute to the nerves that branch off S2. Don't forget to connect S3 as well. Sometimes I forget to do that when I'm drawing this for students. The first nerve branching off the slope of this complex of fibers is the superior gluteal nerve, which supplies the gluteus medius and minimus, and also tensor fasciae lata. The next branch is the inferior gluteal nerve, which supplies the gluteus maximus. After this, we're going to label the sciatic nerve. It's the largest nerve of the body, which runs down the posterior thigh. The sciatic nerve will then branch into the common fibular nerve, and then the tibial nerve, which runs down the back of the leg to supply the posterior compartment muscles. Now after the common fibular nerve wraps around the neck of the fibula, it branches into the superficial fibular nerve, which supplies the muscles of the lateral compartment, and the deep fibular nerve, which supplies the muscles of the anterior compartment. Now this tibial nerve runs down the back of the leg, posterior to the medial malleolus, and goes into the foot and branches into the medial plantar nerve and the lateral plantar nerve. Next, posterior to the plexus, hence the dotted line, we have a nerve with contributions from S1 through S3. This nerve is called the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. And finally, we have the pudendal nerve, which receives contributions from S2, 3, and 4. The pudendal nerve takes an interesting path, where it exits the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen, passes over the ischial spine, and then re-enters the pelvis through the lesser sciatic foramen to supply the perineum. Music 
If you're required to know the nerve root levels, you can use this picture to help you remember the levels for each nerve. This first nerve, the iliohypogastric nerve, you can see it originates from T12 and L1. This nerve, the ilioinguinal nerve, comes straight from L1. If we trace L1 to where it hooks up with L2, we have the genitofemoral nerve. Lateral femoral cutaneous comes from L2 and L3 and runs behind the plexus, hence the dotted line. When we look at the obturator nerve, we can trace it from L2, L3, and L4. The femoral nerve also comes from L2, L3, and L4. Now the saphenous nerve comes from L3 and L4 only. Down here, the superior gluteal nerve, it comes from L4, L5, and S1. We draw the slopes to indicate the direction the fibers are running toward the nerve that they're creating. The inferior gluteal nerve will come from L5, S1, and S2. The sciatic nerve, on the other hand, comes from L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. The tibial nerve, much like the sciatic nerve, comes from L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. The common fibular nerve, however, comes from only L4, L5, S1, and S2. The posterior femoral cutaneous nerve originates from S1, S2, and S3, as you can see. And finally, the pudendal nerve we can see comes from S2, S3, and S4. We start by drawing a series of numbers in rows. A 4 in the first row to represent L4. In the second row, we draw two fives for L5. The remaining rows are sacral levels, so we draw three ones in the third row, then skip a column and draw three twos, skip again and draw three threes. Finally, we'll skip a column and end with a four in the last row. Now these numbers are already organized into groups if we draw them like this. The first group, L4, L5, and S1, are the levels that contribute to both the superior gluteal nerve and the nerve to quadratus femoris. This next group, L5, S1, and S2, make the inferior gluteal nerve and the nerve to obturator internus. This next group, S1, 2, and S3, contribute to the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. S2, 3, and 4 contribute to the pudendal nerve. Now using a different color, I'll circle all the levels that contribute to the sciatic nerve, L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3 sciatic nerve. And finally, S1 and S2 over here make the nerve to the piriformis muscle. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.